Hello. Today we are, are here with uh, Dr. Jonathan Griffith, and uh, we have the we have had the pleasure to to have uh, him here at the UFM at the campus. Uh, hello. Hello. When did you discover that music was your your passion? When I was a young child, um, I'm the youngest of four children, and there was a, an age difference between my older siblings and myself. And so I played by myself a lot, and my parents told me that I would sing as I was playing, that that was just a natural part of, uh, of, of my being. And then I began piano lessons at the age of eight and was in selected choirs while I was in primary school and continued on up in my education. And singing is my first love. From there, uh, I guess there was a moment in time when you decided to dedicate your professional life uh, to music. How, how did it happen? Well, it, when I first left my high school to go to college, uh, my first year in college, I took all kinds of courses of interest, but not music, because I wanted to make sure that I explored all of my interests. So I looked into archaeology and psychology, history, but I discovered that music was really in my soul. And so in my second year of college, I dedicated myself to studying music. And that has been the center of my life since then. Wonderful. Um, what would you say that is the role of music in, uh, in culture? Well, I think the role of music in culture is extremely important. And actually, the role of music in education is even more important. There have been many studies showing that of all the arts, specifically music is one, that there is a physiological connection in the brain taking place between the left and the right hemispheres that help students in their learning process. And there have been studies showing that in the United States specifically, the Schools that rank the highest in academic scores are also the schools that have the most amount of time set aside for all students to be taking music courses, where actually music is a required course in, in the class structure. So therefore, music is extremely important, not only culturally, but also in education and development. And we don't realize that in the medieval ages, music was considered more important than actually that of the physical, um, as a doctor, let's say. It was a much higher profession that music was one of the most important next to religion as far as an area of study. Oh, that, that's impressive. Um, according to your experience, what, what would you say that would be the, the a great uh, musical learning path? Well, what's important is we need to make clear what music is. And today, I think most people associate music with the entertainment world. And so there is music for entertainment, but it's when you make music yourself is when it has that impact. And singing is one of the easiest forms of making music because everyone has that instrument. Uh, but you can do it through other instruments as well. But in the entertainment world, as an observer, you don't receive the same benefits of music as you do in being a participant in the making of music. And oftentimes, we confuse music with entertainment. And there are actually two different elements. We must remember that, oh, not more than 100 years ago, that the only music that most people heard was the music that they made themselves. There were no recording devices. Um, for most communities, the only time you would hear music would be in the church. Uh, and so therefore, if you were a, a common person, then making music yourself with your family was your source of release. And then I guess both types of, uh, or both approach to music uh, have uh, different impacts in, in, in society, right? They do have a different impact. Yes, exactly. What is the, the, what would be an ideal school of music today? 
Well, that's a very good question. Um, I think an ideal school of music today would be one in which, first of all, everyone is participatory in making music. Um, I think it's helpful maybe even to have people explore composing music. I'm not a composer. I am an interpreter. I take what's written on the page and then bring it alive. I think there's a gift in that for people. There are those who play who are very gifted in that particular area. Uh, I, I think what's most important is music should be part of a young child's development and it should continue all the way up until they become adults. It doesn't mean that every person becomes a musician, but that you become appreciative of music. And I think many people have been turned off because they have maybe taken a music course when they were in school from someone who didn't want to be teaching that. And therefore, they have a negative feeling about classical music specifically. And so therefore, they wish to maybe stay away from that music, and yet they don't realize that much of the popular culture music actually comes from the classics. Uh, it's really interesting when I see young people who love a particular piece of music and come to discover that, oh, that was written by uh, Beethoven 200 years ago, uh, and they, they, they can't believe that, uh, what, this is a pop song. So. It's pretty interesting how that continues as a thread through our culture and through our lives, that great music will always be great music. What is the role of mentorship? Uh, uh, what is the role that mentorship plays in, in the musical learning path? I think uh, the role of a mentor in, in music is one to share all that um, the individual who is mentoring have has learned um, as providing information for the student but I do believe that it's wise for the student to seek more than one mentor because there are different views on how to interpret music or this could be any any area of education and life and the more that you learn from other people, uh, then you can create your own versus to imitate and copy that of your mentor does not necessarily show that you yourself have come into your own. It's when you have studied with maybe two or three different people and then you take the best of each and then that is part of who you become and then you have something more to share with other people. Jonathan, what, what do you think is, uh, would be the impact uh, of a school of music uh, in Guatemala, or for example, here at UFM? I think it would be very powerful. Um, music, first of all, just the element of the music, it provides for the students, let's say at the university here, an opportunity for community where they get together as one, and work on a common focus, uh, a common project. They're learning music, let's say, to do a performance of some kind, um, which is then also for the benefit of all the other students because students like to see other students perform for them to show what they have learned and what they can present. Also, what it provides is for the community to realize what is being offered at a campus like this and um, opportunities that are presented to students that would not necessarily be presented uh, to other, other people. As an example, the reason I am here is because the organizer for the Messiah performances brought a group of uh, singers, not just students, but there were adults, to perform in New York City with me in Carnegie Hall, and we performed Messiah in New York City. I was approached and asked would I be willing to come to Guatemala uh, to conduct Messiah, and I said yes, I would. So I was invited, and I came in December, and um, it was a great experience for me, and I believe it was a good experience for the singers as well. And so that has just continued to broaden 
the opportunities for growth and learning for everybody. And uh, now many of those singers are participating in a tour next summer to Barcelona for a performance of the Verdi Requiem in the Palau de la Musica, uh, which is one of the most beautiful concert halls in the world. <laughs> and lastly, um, you've had a, you've had a very rich and varied uh, career, musical career. Could you share with us the best moments uh, you have had uh, um, professionally? With oh, music? that is really a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, I think any moment that I'm able to be making music is, is really the best moment because I'm actually able to share Uh, with anyone, whatever the degree of ability in the making of the music and perhaps to show something that they, the musicians were unaware of, that uh, an enlightenment into the music where there's an aha, like, oh. Um, and that's always exciting for me. Of course, I have had uh, moments of, of career Highlights. Uh, my first experience in conducting in Carnegie Hall was in 1989, and that was uh, a, a spectacular. Um, I've had m many performances uh, since then in, in other countries. I've done the Verdi Requiem in Spain, uh, or pardon me, yeah, in Spain, in Barcelona before, and that was a, an extreme highlight for me. Uh, so to, to pick just one would be very difficult, but truthfully, every time I am making music, then for me that is a highlight uh, because I am able to do it. And it's when the day comes that I'm not able to do it, then my life is finished. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you very much uh, for sharing with us this, uh, uh, these thank stories. You, and and uh, thank you for coming to UFM and thank you for collaborating with uh, the Messiah Project. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>